Hello everybody and welcome to your weather forecast. I am Mr. G, your weather forecaster today on this Palm Sunday. So thank you for joining us today as we talk about the weather forecast across the country. So we're going to wrap up what is going on this weekend as well as take a look at what's going to be happening uh, into this upcoming work week. So uh, some folks are on their spring breaks. Some people have yet to have spring break. And their spring break will be coming up here within a couple of weeks. And here in town, we're still waiting for St. Paul Unified and Minneapolis Unified, uh, Minneapolis Public Schools and St. Paul Unified is in California. I'm from LA, so school districts in, LA, in California usually go by, like I was in the Los Angeles Unified School District and the Compton Unified School District. Here we have St. Paul Public Schools and Minneapolis Public Schools, and they'll be having their spring break here in the in, in the next week or so after Easter. So, uh, but we're going to talk about the weather forecast and not the spring breaks of the public schools here. But some folks are still waiting to have theirs. So we have a winter storm that's taking place across the Upper Midwest and the Northern Plains. It's snowing right now here in the Twin Cities. But it really took its time in getting going because a lot of dry air in the low levels of the atmosphere. So that's going to limit the amount of snow we're going to get. And dry air coming into uh, the southern part of the storm. And thunderstorms down to the south are also hogging all of the moisture that's being transported from the Gulf of Mexico and, and across the plains to the north. So we're going to see a little bit less moisture because of thunderstorms down over Iowa in the central plains today. So that's going to limit the amount of snow. But I think we're going to still be in winter storm category strength. So we're still going to see at least 6 to 10 inches of snow when we could have saw 17 to 18 inches of snow. That's how much dry air and warmer air is going to, be going to be limiting the amount of snow that we're going to get here across parts of the upper Midwest. So we're going to see mostly rain for your day on Monday as that snow is going to transition to rain as warmer air comes in from the south overnight tonight. So in the morning in Minneapolis and St. Paul, in the Twin Cities area, when you wake up, it'll probably be raining and it should be warm enough for liquid precipitation instead of frozen precipitation. And we might even see some rumbles of thunder as well tomorrow in the morning hours as we have that rainfall coming in from the south. And then it will begin to taper off in the afternoon hours. We'll see the rain taper off in the late afternoon and into the evening hours and rain will move in overnight on Monday night and into your day Tuesday. And then we're going to see a rain and snow mix through part of the day on Tuesday as this storm finally begins to pull away from the upper Midwest and head into uh, Canada. So we're going to see that storm. We have a, a Colorado low, which is usually the source for our significant snowstorms that we see here in the Twin Cities. So let's take a look at our first map and it's going to be the current radar situation and you see our deformation band here across the northern plains so we have snow coming out of Montana through through North Dakota and into South Dakota and parts of Nebraska but we're seeing some snow and we're seeing some uh, lightning so we got thunderstorms right here across parts of central Iowa and very heavy snow you see how bright that white is so that's very heavy snow these are thunderstorms here that are coming right across the border of Iowa and Minnesota so we're going to see the possibility of some thunder snow but as you can look in this area right here you see this this is dry air being sucked into our storm and this typically happens with very strong storms we have what's called a dry slot 
And we're seeing that dry spotting over southwestern Minnesota and northeastern Iowa, and we're seeing some dry air get sucked into our storm. So that could also limit the amount of snow. And what you're gonna see is probably the snow beginning to taper off after dark here, as it's about the five o'clock hour right now. So that's a look across the radar here across the upper Midwest. And we also have some snow going on down here across parts of Colorado near Denver. So west of Denver, we have some snow in the Rockies and Vail and Aspen. So we're seeing some snow down across that region. And we got some snow showers here across parts of Wyoming where we have winter storm warnings down through those regions. But down here to the south, across um, Kansas and Nebraska, southern Iowa and Missouri, we have liquid rain and thunderstorms. So we have thunderstorms down across this region and thunderstorms way down here to the south. So we're going to see that uh, weather and that potential for some severe weather down there as well. And here's a look again at that radar. We have our deformation band. It took a while to get that snow going in the snow. It's going to be very slushy, so we're we have a, uh, we're looking at six to ten inches of slush falling tonight, and we're going to see most of that snow if and through the evening and into the hours mid about midnight hours. We're going to see the snow taper off and mix with rain, so we're going to see temperatures go up overnight, which can sometimes happen because we have that warmer air coming up from the south and we have that low pressure center coming up out of Colorado and Kansas and it's lifting due north northeast so that's going to lift up over Minnesota so we're going to see that warm air surge up ahead but on the back side of that low once that low lifts to the north on the back side a northwesterly flow will whirl in behind that low so we're going to see another shot of snow at the very end possibly but we're going to I think it might mix with rainfall we're going to see cold air Tuesday night so Tuesday night and Wednesday night will be very cold on the backside after that low pressure center moves on out. Cold air will rush in behind it and we're going to see it cold at night. But the daytime temperatures will warm up fairly nicely because of the higher sun angles and it's just uh, almost the end of March so we're heading into April. So we're going to see daytime highs in the upper 40s to lower 50s as we head into Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday as we have other systems coming in that were going to be mostly rain. We're going to still see some um, bouts of rain and snow but I don't think we're going to see uh, any more significant snow this week because of the mixing with rain and some, some of these systems might be all rain as we're going to have a lot of weaker systems Tra traversing along the northern stream, stream of the jet stream as we have a split flow. We have a northern stream and we have a southern stream of the jet stream that's going to be bringing severe weather down across parts of the south. And with that southern stream and storm systems along the south, that's going to limit moisture to the northern stream. So we're going to see weaker storm systems over the north. If we get the jet stream to fuse together and maybe we can get those storms to kind of fuse together, then maybe we could get a big massive storm, but I don't see that happening. I see, I see the split jet stream continuing through most of this upcoming week. And on our next map here is a look at all the winter weather advisories in place. And we have our winter storm warning here across South Dakota and North Dakota, over into Minnesota and Western Wisconsin, we see that winter storm warning. We have a blizzard warning down here across uh, Southern South Dakota, uh, Nebraska and Northeastern Kansas and into Eastern uh, Colorado, we have a blizzard warning in this region. So blizzard conditions and winter storm uh, warnings as well, baby, as we have high winds with this storm system. So lots of snow, some rain, thunderstorms, and a wind gusts up to 40 miles per hour independent of any thunderstorm activity. And so here is the look at the winds with this storm system. We have our Colorado low coming up out of the, uh, the, uh, the Southern Rockies, and that low pressure center is going to move up 
across into Nebraska, move across South Dakota, across northwestern Minnesota, and into Canada, and that's going to bring this rainfall. You see all this rain here, and that's going to bring all that warm air and rain up into Minnesota, so we're going to see the snow transition into rain in the early, early morning hours tomorrow. So here is that snowfall forecast for tonight. Here's where we're seeing the heavy, heavy snow across Nebraska, uh, South Dakota, and into Minnesota. And this is that 12 to 18 inches of snow here with the dark blue. And we're seeing that into southwestern Minnesota. But we're looking at 8 to 12 here across the Twin Cities. But I think it's going to be closer to maybe 6 to 8 inches of snow. I think it's what we're going to end with this storm system because of the dry air mixing in and then the warmer air. So we're going to see the snow transition to rain. And that's going to lead to lower slow snowfall totals. All right, here is a look at the storm system where we have a dry line down across the central and southern plains, dry line across Oklahoma down into uh, western Texas, and that's going to be the focus for hailers. So we're going to see hail producers. Uh, down here, we're going to see tornadic thunderstorms across this, the Gulf Coast. So Mississippi, Louisiana, uh, Arkansas, Alabama and West Florida is where we're going to see those thunderstorms capable of producing tornadoes down here and that's going to be for tonight and uh, this is guys for to on Monday so Monday night we're going to see those tornado tornadic thunderstorms along the Gulf Coast but today and tonight we have our hail producers here across the plains we're going to see our, our gorilla hail producing thunderstorms. Now these could produce some uh, tornadoes as well, but I, I think the bigger tornado threat is going to be with this activity on Monday. So Sunday and Monday, okay? So today we're going to see large hail, wind, and a few tornadoes are going to be the main threats with these two areas of severe weather but I think this area is going to be more mostly hail. We might see some weak tornadoes with this area maybe funnel clouds that the tornado don't quite reach the ground or maybe we don't see a full condensation funnel but it doesn't mean that it didn't touch the ground but typically high plains thunderstorms have very narrow funnels they typically produce rope tornadoes or um, the, the skinny tornadoes where these tornado thunderstorms down here along the Gulf Coast tend to produce large wedge tornadoes. Usually thunderstorms with low cloud bases, low to the uh, surface, tend to produce wedge tornadoes where elevated thunderstorms which is what we typically see out here over the West Texas town of El Paso and in Texas. You get my um, uh, old El Paso reference there from Marty Robbins. I love that guy. But um, get my, <laughs> you see what I did right there, don't you? All right, so out over the, all over the West Texas town of El Paso, you can fall in love with a Mexican girl, but today you're going to be falling in love with thunderstorms out there, and we're going to see some we've been seeing some hail producers. I've already seen a one and a quarter inch hail out here over uh, north central Texas and western Oklahoma. We've been seeing those thunderstorms producing large hail already. So here is that severe threat today and we're going to see that severe threat across Kansas, Oklahoma and north central Texas. And then here is our hail area so right here, Southern Kansas, uh, Northwestern Oklahoma, we're going to see the bigger threat for very large hail. This is two inch diameter hail in this region here. Now we have the potential to see two inch diameter hail anywhere in this, but the greater risk for it is right here where those lapse rates are pretty high. So that just tells us that we're going to see very strong convection the stronger the convection, the bigger the hail. 
So down here across, this is for your Monday for tomorrow. We're gonna to see those severe thunderstorms across a good portion of the deep south to the Gulf Coast. So Mississippi, Louisiana, parts of Arkansas, then over to Alabama, West Florida, East Texas. We're gonna see severe thunderstorms and tornadoes are gonna be a big concern with that activity. Large hill is expected too, but we have a better risk for tornadoes tomorrow night in that activity. So as we get into Tuesday, we're going to still see the threat for severe weather along the Gulf Coast. It's going to shift slightly east. We'll see more of that threat across West Florida, all the way to Tallahassee, southwestern Georgia, southern Alabama, and parts of eastern, southeastern Mississippi. Mississippi, but we're going to see those severe thunderstorms. We have a marginal risk for severe storms, and we're going to see some tornadoes possible in damaging winds and large hail. Here is the rainfall forecast across the south and into the southeast, and this is going to be uh, through uh, Thursday, and we're going to see generally one to two inches, a few spots, especially in the Carolinas. And maybe parts of the Ozarks can pick up two to three inches of rain. That is your weather forecast. My name is Mr. G. Uh, I'm going to have another video where we're going to take a look at the national radar and talk about what's going on coast to coast and take an in depth look again. I think this was a pretty in depth video, but I want to take an in depth look at what's live going on across the country. So, thank you for watching this video. Leave a like for me if you are watching on TikTok or YouTube and feel free to subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can leave a follow on TikTok and I will see you guys all tomorrow evening in the next video because I got to work during the day so I'll be around in the evening to produce a video for you guys, okay? So thank you. I hope you have a great weekend and a good night and a good start to your work day and your school day tomorrow. Bye-bye.